Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption video walkthrough. This is going to be the Wrathful Angren boss fight, or as I like to call him, Untranslatable Japanese Kanji Name Man. Not quite as catchy, I'll give you that. Uh, this is an interesting boss, guys. If he gives you a good pattern where he doesn't do range moves when you're up close, which boggles my goddamn mind why he does that, but if he doesn't do that, you will kill this boss really quickly with the punishes I'm going to give you and have no problems whatsoever. But if the AI shits the bed and starts doing long range punishes when you're up close, you're gonna have an awkward fight. And that's the only problem with this encounter. When you're standing bang in front of the boss, there's absolutely no reason why he should ever do moves designed to screw you up when you run away. I think all the melee attacks should be provoked from being close to him, and all the chucking the stupid mobs, chucking the fireballs, casting the swords, that should be reserved for people who play defensively and move away from that front line. If that's how this guy's AI worked, I think he'd be superb and I would like this boss fight a lot more than I do. But as it stands, you can stand on the tip of his penis and he will still use shit moves and there's no way to not make him do it. And I've banged my head against this boss for a couple hours to try and make him do what I want but it seems like he's immune to conditioning because he just has a random chance of doing those shitty moves. It's just RNG I guess and I don't really like using that word but it's true. Another part of Angren that's going to cause you some difficulty is that he has moves that look the same but they're not. So he can slam his hand on the ground and leave it there so you can punish it with two to three hits, but he'll also do the exact same slam and then swipe. And it's a very subtle difference between the two that you have to react to. And if you go to punish it too quickly and it's the wrong one, you will take damage and you will take a big chunk of life. Whenever Angren does this, where he does his little flail, his temper tantrum, it means he's going to break the platform. And another thing, I think if you fight him like I'm fighting him right now, he shouldn't break the platform. He should only break the platform to punish people being passive and defensive. But here are the swords. Be very careful with the swords, guys. When he hits the platform, if he hits a sword, it will fling it, and it has a hitbox that can hit you. So you need to be very careful because they'll catch you, they'll do a lot of damage, and this boss kills you very quickly because he's got big, big damage. But almost all of his moves have got a, a pretty decent timing window to punish them with a running R2. And once you break his armor, you do really good damage to his arms. And uh, he's breaking the platform again. In this particular encounter, I did not find any real use for the spears or for the pots. I think maybe if he does his mouth laser, you might be able to do something with that. But as it, as it stands right now, I didn't figure it out. That telegraphs him doing the swords. Watch out for the glowing spots and then dodge his follow-up. That move right there is the best punish because you can get four hits on it if you do it correctly. But there are some patterns where he never does that and there are other ones where he does it a lot. And uh, I'm actually going to get screwed by it later on, which was really frustrating, but what can you do? The running R1 that I did just then is fantastic for punishing things that are just out of your range because it has a wonderful forward momentum to it. But here is Angron breaking the platform. This is me messing around with the I don't have that item left anymore animation that looks really funny. And then here's the big punch. This is the Falcon Bang that we want. So punish it, two hits, three hits. And if I was closer to him, I could have got the, the final hit there. If you come here with compromised stamina, you will never be able to do a maximum punish on this boss. But so far the fight is going, other than him doing the sword move a bunch of times when I don't think he should do it, it's gone really well, we've got a pretty good pattern and he's breaking it for the final time now. Which, this move of him breaking the platform, don't even begin to try and test that move. Every time I've tried to attack it while he's doing it, I've took massive damage. And then here's where my damage comes, so watch this. I roll into a spot where a sword is landing and it and it hits me, so yeah. That was depressing, but what can you do? He's only two hits away from death, and we'll get him on the next one. Oh damn, he catches me again, but at this point I guess I stopped caring. Yeah, there we go, there's Angren. That's the end of him. I've seen a lot of people online saying that this boss is really hard, and I guess if you fight him in a way that's not productive, he probably is, because he hits like a truck. But if you keep out of his range, and you punish with running attacks, you will stomp on him very quickly. I personally find this guy to be very high spectacle, but incredibly simple. 
I just wish there was a way to stop him doing the swords. Maybe if I throw a spear at him, or if I throw a pot at him, something like that, I'll figure out a strategy to make him not do that. But as it stands, he kind of just does what he wants. And uh, that to me is immensely frustrating. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.